Okay. Um, so I had originally named this talk uh, Uranus Chiron Opposition, No Way Out But Through. And that didn't feel right to me. It just seemed like a, like a placeholder. But as I kind of dove into um, the, the right angle to approach for this information, knowing that there are so many different angles to this, and there's a lot of different talks that could be given on this topic that would all be very relevant. Um, the whole concept of no way out but through started to really feel less and less sincere for me. Um, my feelings more so lately is that you can just kind of, you know, um, skip up to a different um, paradigm where the healing has happened and that these signatures can really help with that. So in honor of that, I renamed this talk, um, the Uranus Chiron Opposition, Higher Dimensions of Healing, just because why not? <laughs> so um, I'm going to click over to my slideshow now. So give me a moment while I get that opened up. Let's see. Share a screen. Do you guys see my screen? Not yet. Okay. Let me see. It's coming now. Yes. Could okay. you give me full screen? The yes. Point. All right. Thank you for your patience. So, okay. Um, so, higher dimensions of healing, Uranus Chiron opposition. And just a, a little bit of, of um, additional preface. What I love about Linda's uh, very generously prodding me to give talks is that as much as I resist it, um, I find that um, I'm often able to lock on the topic that I'm needing to delve into for my own work and for my own understanding and that there's a lot of really good solid support that comes through for me personally in, um, in taking a, a nice nosedive into astrology. I don't give myself that, that time. I'm very busy, so I don't often get to um, dive in as deeply as I would like on very specific um, topics. So this one, you know, just it stood out to me and I wasn't sure why. And I kept wrestling with, you know, which angle. But as I started to get into it, um, I was in this, this perfect place where, you know, after you've let your subconscious work in it for a little while, when you sit down to write, it just kind of writes itself. There is so much that just wanted to be said. And so I'm grateful for the opportunity to get to, to share that because it was all stuff that I was definitely needing to hear that's really relevant to what I'm working on. And um, also a lot of synchronicity around this because uh, last minute I, I hopped on board with some friends to drive out to Ashland to go to a psychedelic uh, conference about the um, healing qualities of psychedelics and it's just really interesting to be in a, a whole scene of people that are, are getting into that topic and it seemed also really fitting and as I'm working on this while people around me are, are talking I'm typing words as they're being said you know just a lot of a lot of um, a lot of synchronicity you know I'll be writing a word and then I'll I'll hear it, you know, just kept happening over and over again, or hearing conversations around me of people that are talking about this from their own angle while I'm sitting down writing this talk. So, um, so it's it's all perfect, you know, the the timing of it all. I just I just trust that um, I just trust that this is relevant, and I hope this helps you guys as well. So, getting into it now. Um, if we are going to talk about what Chiron does when it's working with Uranus, it's really relevant to look at um, Chiron as the bridge between Uranus and Saturn. So um, to get into that just a little bit, um, say among many things, Saturn represents societal and institutional norms. It's less of a representation of the culture of a society than it is, um, oops, pardon me, than it is of the conditioning of a society that is reliant on structure. Uranus is much more connected to culture among groups of like-minded people, such as tribal cultures and uh, like-minded communities. Saturn also represents consciousness to the extent that it is the organizational aspect of our minds or thinking, while Uranus is considered the superconscious or the collective consciousness. 
Chiron has been described as the, the bridge between these two dynamics, bridging this more limiting aspect of organizational consciousness with the superconsciousness. And for this, it was coined the rainbow bridge. So um, if we take a look into Chiron more specifically, um, astrologer, Martin, astrologer Martin Lass had a lot of really great stuff to say about Chiron that, that resonates for me. Um, he writes about Chiron as forming a new paradigm. Uh, he writes that the new Chiron paradigm asserts that the wounding and healing journey is synonymous with the descent and reascent of consciousness through the cosmos. With creation, uh, which was the fall, and subsequent evolution, which is the reascension, um, Chiron asserts that the healing journey consists of awakening to the perfection of our lives, no more, no less. It asserts that there lies a gift within every wound waiting to be discovered. Um, wound is taken in the broadest sense, encompassing the physical, the emotional, the mental, and the spiritual. So this insight into Chiron is wonderfully in keeping with the principles of evolutionary astrology and its incorporation of the idea of separating and returning desires. However, our collective evolution at this stage, as I understand it, is not spurned on by a desire to simply be absorbed back into the great illuminating orb of all that is. At our current collective stage, the desire to return to source is a reconnection to it from a state of individuation where we each carry and express ourselves according to our own unique blueprints, essentially our essence. You see what I did there? Essentially our essence. <laughs> While fully feeling our connection to and place among all that is. So it's, um, it's bringing source within and expressing it here, you know, on the earth. And that's, um, as I understand, that's the, the next phase of what we're heading into on an evolutionary level collectively. So Uranus represents exactly this. Uranus wants us to break through the conditioning of Saturn in order to express our most authentic selves through our own individuated essence. It is from true, unconditioned expression of our essence that we express our dharma and from which unencumbered innovation flows. Saturn seeks to encumber this innovation in the name of structure. While Uranus seeks to break free from the limits of structure in order to broaden the scope of what is possible, as we experience the restrictions of structure and its subsequent limiting beliefs, and as parts of our essence are cast off or blocked in the name of conformity, we experience wounding. This is where Chiron, as their mediator, creates the necessary bridge for us as our journey aids us in transforming the wounds that we have incurred into solutions. The healing and insight through which we can claim our essence and to guide others to the healing and reclaiming of their essence. So in this way, Chiron supports our path to the Uranian impulse where societal laws are not governed by structure but rather communities of like-minded people gather and structure is replaced by the synergy of the collective. Uranus and Chiron hold a certain similarity in their functions. Uranus wants for us to be authentic. It offers us the opportunity um, to decondition and to break free from the blocks that inhibit our essential nature. Through transits, when we encounter the Uranian impulse and are not encountering it from a place of authenticity, when it instead runs into our blocks that inhibit authentic expression, we experience it as shocks that are meant to facilitate the breaking down of these barriers and to support deconditioning. This can feel devastating in the short term, though it's meant to serve. And I, I bet, you know, a lot of you have experienced that. And I think Uranus can get a, a bad rap in that case, in, uh, in those circumstances. But it's always been my guiding principle and my compass to not resist. So it can serve you to the extent that um, when we're blocking is when we're resisting. You know, we, when we, Uranus and Pentas are blocks, we're doing this. And so we're putting up a barrier for it to break through so that it can get to us and it can get to our essence. So um, 
So always just breathe through it. <laughs> So Uranus and Chiron hold a certain similarity in their functions. Chiron supports us in getting in touch with the wounding that we have incurred that has resulted in us putting up blocks. Chiron also helps us to get in touch with breaking down these barriers through the process of healing. Um, Martin Lass writes that Chiron's issues and affairs concern health and disease and the relationship to our spiritual journey through life. Chiron says that health and disease, dysfunction and disorder are our teachers. They're homing beacons toward our return to spirit, towards greater wholeness, consciousness, truth, and love. When um, Uranus and Chiron in our opposition, specifically, if we're going to look at how those are working when they're opposing each other, um, Linda Goodman writes um, some really helpful information on that. She says that with Chiron opposition Uranus, Uranus shines a light, a challenge in a sense upon our wounds, blockages and unresolved issues. By illuminating these, we are given the ultimate opportunity to deal with the wounds and issues as they come to the fore. This aspect is perhaps the most active of the Chiron Uranus aspects, barring the conjunction. The opposition causes us to run in the opposite direction of our woundedness. And in doing so, we run into Uranus, who then proceeds to show us the higher view of that from which we were running. When Uranus's truth and its bigger picture become too difficult to handle, challenging us beyond our current capacity, we run again back into our wounds, back to Chiron. Here, due to Uranus's light shining on the wounds, we find new material to work with, adding to our overall understanding. When what we find there again becomes too painful again, we run again, bumping into Uranus, so it goes on in a tick-tocking journey of healing and evolution of consciousness. If we are not able to deal with the wounds and pain that come up, and we are not able to deal with the greater truth that Uranus offers, then we are stuck in a kind of nightmare of constant running. In this case, we tend to try to do anything to blank out. We attempt this by using alcohol, drugs, sleep, work, music, and all other types of escapism to avoid the wounds, blockages, and unresolved issues. If we try this for too long, however, it will inevitably be reflected in our bodies through illness, disease, and general unwellness. This all or nothing kind of psychology is the very reason why Chiron opposition Uranus and also Chiron opposition Pluto is an aspect that confers healing ability and or focus in our lives. We cannot avoid it. We cannot run away from it. It follows us wherever we try to go. This is why the generations of people born between 1952 and 1989 have altered the consciousness of the planet via the healing modalities taken in their broadest sense. The mid-1960s represented the fulcrum point. The late 1970s represented the culmination, and the 1990s represented the peak, particularly as this time encompasses not only Chiron's peril, uh, Perillion and perigee, but also Chiron's own half return. This psychology combined with the sheer number of oppositions Chiron and, and Uranus made during this time is one of the major contributions to the discovery of Chiron, as we have already seen. Um, and a Native American prophecy, by the way, states that when a planet of healing is discovered in the sky, the ancient and sacred warrior teachings will return to Earth. In 1977, Chiron, the planet of healing, was discovered. So um, I'm going to use my chart as an example, and I have lots of experience with these, um, with these energies to, to back up um, a good amount of anecdotal evidence. And um, I want to try to leave time at the end for, um, for the uh, volunteer charts. And so I try to keep an eye on the time because um, I got a lot to say. <laughs> so. Um, the the idea that certain teachings would return to the earth um, when the planet of healing would be discovered is in keeping with with what I've seen to be true with with me and also a lot of um, others that I've met with the, this opposition and also I, what I've seen on happening among a lot of people in the healing communities in general is there is a huge um, theme of working out karmas of 
um, having been in communities that were persecuted in the past. Um, communities that live close to nature, um, tribal societies, also um, pagan communities who were wiped out um, and purged from the earth during a time of, of genocide. And um, this, this ability to heal and this ability to understand and live close to nature uh, was really driven underground. And there's a lot of trauma around that. A lot of people right now who are not just accessing healing, but working out a lot of trauma and resistance around that. Um, I myself, um, with, and you'll see I have Uranus in, um, in Scorpio in the 12th house and opposite um, Chiron and Taurus in the 6th house. I've, um, when I work with, um, working with evolutionary astrologies, it's really nice because I, I, it goes into a lot of past life dynamics. And I, um, when I'm looking at certain things on my chart, I'll have um, past life memories resurface or, and I'm just working on certain themes and feeling into certain themes of things that I'm working on. I'll spontaneously you know, slip back into an experience that I'd had of, from a particular lifetime and, um, and all the feelings associated with that. And that helps me to understand where this came from and what I'm working on. And so I've had a lot of really great opportunities to work through some of those things recently. And it's worth noting that um, Jupiter retrograde right now, um, it's stationed retrograde at 23 degrees Scorpio. And just as it was passing over my Uranus, I had a really profound um, experience of healing that helped me to, to move forward in some really big ways with, with my peace in this. And so specifically, it, it brought up um, wounding around a particular lifetime where I was um, the, a healer and caretaker for a community that lived close to nature during the time when these genocides were being carried out. And the people that I loved and the people that I served and were meant to protect um, were killed in ways that I couldn't, um, I couldn't really comprehend. There was nothing that I could do about it. I couldn't help these people that I had been um, the healer and protector of. And so um, I had kind of, I have wrapped up my um, association with grief with my association of healing because, and I, I couldn't deal with the grief. And so I, I blocked that in a lot of ways. And I, um, I tried to move forward in ways that would be helpful or useful by escaping into um, more of an ob objective way of being in the world and not feeling uh, my feelings quite as much, so much as just noticing when I was having them and then moving into an objective space with them and, and analyzing them from in a place of objectivity. And if you notice my, my nodes, um, you know, my self node in Aquarius in the third house, um, and with this Uranus and Chiron squaring the nodes, so that makes sense that for me that was a skip step for sure. Um, and also you see Chiron in the sixth house, house in Taurus, it makes sense that, that the way that, um, that this archetype was playing out for me was in the form of being in service, um, in, a, in a community that was closer to nature, you know, community being represented by Uranus, and also spiritual community, 12th house, um, service, 6th house, you know, Taurus, nature. So it's, it all, it's all there, and it all makes a lot of sense. Um, and I, I've known that that's a piece that I've been working on. I've been trying to integrate more, um, move my node, um, ninth house in Leo, so uh, here I am, you know, in front of all of you teaching about this, um, being seen. So, you know, that makes sense. <laughs> um, I'm trying. I'm getting there. But uh, as much as I, I do still resist. But the, um, so recently when, when Jupiter was, was going over my Uranus, I had an experience where a beloved pet of mine, um, humbly enough, just a, a little pet rat, you know, named Rosie had um, began the death process and she was really old and she had lived um, far beyond what would be expected for a little rat and she'd had a good life. But when she started to deteriorate, she was deter deteriorating very quickly. And I was really struggling with the question of whether or not to um, put her to sleep. And um, 
And when I felt into it, you know, it felt wrong for me to get to decide when another creature would die. And finally, I just, I decided just to ask her and it hadn't occurred to me just to ask her. And, um, and I experienced communication with animals pretty um, oftentimes and I'm, I'm remembering to do that more intentionally. And she, she had imparted to me that she knew she was dying. It's her time, but that um, she was, um, not ready to go that day and she wanted to die at home and she wanted to die in my arms and so for me to go through the process of really supporting her through that and coming to a place of of really using that um objectivity of Aquarius um not from a, a mental state but from a place of um Ex more of acceptance, like non-judgment of the process as being bad, seeing it objectively in that way, but not disconnected from my heart, which is integrating that, that Leo piece, that um, understanding that there wasn't, that my discomfort, you know, it was in, in thinking that there was anything for me to do about it, which is that Chiron in the sixth house. Um, other people's suffering can be painful for me because I, I take it on. I, I feel like there's something that I should be doing if I'm not doing enough or if I'm not doing it right. So um, for her, there was a big lesson for me in just um, acceptance and knowing that the only thing for me to do was to love, to love her through it because it was her choice and I had to accept that it was her choice. So the process was, um, <laughs> it wasn't pretty. But um, eventually she did pass, and whenever she, she passed, another piece of this that um, becomes relevant with the Uranus being in the, the 12th house in, um, in Scorpio is that I also, um, I work with souls that are, are passing or have passed, and I have that communication with them, and that once they're on the other side, they can talk to me. Um, and so... Oh, Sorry about that. How do I get that? Um, I'm just noticing I have messages. I don't know how to check them when I'm in screen sharing mode. So forgive me. If someone wants to tell me, they can just um, pop in and, and let me know if there's a message for me. Um, anyway, the um, once she had passed, um, I was able to, to say goodbye to her and, um, and help to see her on her way. And I felt called to um, give her a, a resting place that um, I just felt, I felt really called to honor this process. Um, this, for some reason, this just felt really important to me. And so I, I took her little body and I wrapped it up in a, a, in a medicine cloth. I make these um, tapestry cloths that are mandalas and I call them sacred shibori. And so I, I wrapped her up in one of, one of those cloths and with a, big old crystal and I, I took her out into nature and this um this incredible hike and just like this really beautiful part of um part of the our northwest and there is this this river that just it's the hike goes um upstream for this river which provides an abundance of waterfalls and so we found a beautiful waterfall to bury her under and as I was sitting with the water I just felt um, the current of the fall was just generating love. Uh, and it was just so clear. It, it put me into an altered state just being with it and feeling this love flooding through my body. So I took some time to sit with it. And as it opened me up, um, it had messages for me. And one of the messages was it explained to me what I had um, began uh, this, this story with was it, it explained to me how I had connected grief um, with the ability to heal. And so um, for me to, to open up to that and to allow myself to grieve her, now that I had, um, I did my job, you know, I helped her through her passing, I put her in the ground, and, um, and now it was okay for me to focus on me. And I understood grief to be an act of self-love that we give ourselves. And for me to give myself that was a really big gift in that moment. And as I opened up to that, I felt all of the grief that I had been repressing for who knows how many lifetimes just come up, but it was, it was really gentle because um, as I opened up to it without judgment, as I had learned in her passing, um, to focus on the love 
and nothing to do but love. I don't need to judge it. I don't, I don't need to fix it. I just accept it and I love it and I feel it. Um, and in that, I was able to understand that grief and love are the same. So, um, and so this was just a really, for, for my specific chart as an example, this is just a really wonderful um, example of integrating the, those squares to the nodes um, and how it was this transit to my Uranus that had really facilitated this for me in a huge way. And on my way, um, walking back to the car, you know, for my hike on the, on the way back, um, staying in a place of openness, I just... I could feel almost a tugging and I realized that the, the present, there was a presence there. And I realized that it was the presence that had been with me, um, with the water that had been, you know, explaining to me about my grief process and helping me to open up. Um, and when it, occur it hadn't occurred to me before that that might be, there might be a consciousness to that that was reaching out to connect. And so as I opened to that, um, I, I realized that it was the, the consciousness of the land. And the more I opened to that, the, the more I, I um, understood that I was in the presence of a very powerful um, being that um, I called the, the trail is the Copper Creek Trail up in the Northwest. I, I referred to her as the, Copper, the goddess of Copper Creek. <laughs> and, um, and as I opened up and she explained to me um, the, the process through which that what she was using to, to help me heal the, these blocks that I had. Um, she told me that, oh, well, I, I asked her, I, I realized in this moment that it was in those communities living close to nature. It was um, during my lifetime in this, this past community where I was able to heal, that that understanding had come from the land. So that's what it means to learn from nature that um, the land had been teaching me how to do this. And here I was, I opened up, I moved this block and I, it was like I was ready and the land was ready to teach me again. And so I asked her if she could teach me um, how to do what she had done for me. And she said, yes, that, that she could, but also that she would come with me, that she would stay active in my consciousness and a uh, part of her would, would stay with me and follow me and continue to guide me and teach me. And as I, um, with this offer, I, I got a little overwhelmed, you know, it, I, I understood this to be a really, um, it humbled me. I, I realized the, 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 the value in what she was offering, and I had a moment of feeling not worthy, and then she, she sensed this and explained that it was because I'd given her my beloved pet, Rosie. You know, I'd, I'd honored her by bringing her gifts and bringing her my tapestry, my artwork, my, my crystal, and and that um, by having holding ceremony on, on her land in this way that I'd honored her and she was going to give me gifts in return. And so, um, so the signature, you know, I feel like this is a, a really good example of the kind of healing that the discovery of Chiron itself is ready to usher in. And it's a reawakening and a remembering of these things that we used to hold and that we used to carry and that, that there has been so much wounding around these these energies i i know that the at the extent to which i carry that that um that there are so many of us carrying that and we're carrying it for the collective you know not just ourselves that we're working out um a, a space on this planet where people can feel safe to express this again and to live in this this way that we used to live but in a new way you know it's not going to be quite the same that it's it's happening but it's going to be um is we're going to be taking everything that uh, we've learned through the process of healing this dynamic and we're going to lift it up into a, a new way of doing it. Um, and another, just one more quick example before we um, are able to um, look at some other charts is there was, um, there was another moment that I had and I, I poured through my journals to try to find um, where I might have written about this. I wanted to find a date because I'm curious to, to, read, to find out if, if, um, if this opposition was being aspected in some way during this time. But um, this is another perfect example um, from a, a different um, angle where I was sitting on my couch one day. Pardon me. So I was, um, I was just 
sitting and not particularly meditating, you know, just, I guess, feeling open. And um, I was caught off guard. Um, I just received a, a, a message while I was sitting there. I was told, find your hive. And when I registered, like, wait, what? <laughs> Find my hive? I kind of laughed, you know, I'm like, silly spirit. The um, expression is find your tribe. And, um, and as I was laughing at this, I was told, no, 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 find your hive. And I had to, to sit with that for a minute. It caught me off guard because what I had, my initial reaction to that was, oh, um, Hive consciousness, okay, I don't know if I'm ready for that. I mean, I'm still getting comfortable with expressing Melanie, you know. Um, I, it's taken me a while to, be, to feel brave enough to express Melanie to the world and, you know, something I've been working on. I'm not really ready to give that up yet. And so as I was feeling into what high consciousness actually felt like. And I, I had these questions, you know, like, does that mean, you know, giving up the ego? Does that, does that mean um, giving up individuality? And so in response to these, um, my questions, I had, um, as I just, I spontaneously um, slipped into um, a different consciousness. I found myself much like when I, I slip into, you know, past life memories and it's a full body experience. Um, in this moment, I had slipped into um, an expression of myself in another dimension. And, um, and I experienced myself as a being of light, um, just traveling on my journey. Um, it, the, it's, the feeling of it was just being so light and buoyant and clear. And it was like my heart was, a gu was guiding me forward without any resistance. Um, my purpose was clear. My dharma was so clear. And there was just, there was no resistance to it at all. Um, my place um, in my community, my place um, among source was just, there was no question about it. And, um, and it was just a, a feeling of, of purpose and direction and, and just love. My heart was just guiding me forward. I was floating along. And another part of this that was really important for me to understand um, the full message of this was that I passed another being on my path. I'm, I'm coming this way in this, this um, male form um, is passing me. And as we passed, there was just um, a nod to each other, a, a, an acknowledgement and a recognition. And in that moment, I was able to feel my full archetype, uh, my, my essence, my blueprint, um, as it was um, not being him. And we were, our minds were linked, our hearts were linked. Um, as I nodded to him, I felt his essence fully and completely. I felt um his whole archetype he had his own angle i had mine and there was no explanation um i'd never i didn't have to um i knew that i would never have to explain who i was that no one would ever have to explain to me who they are um there's just a knowing a sense you it's like we just transferred files you know and it was just a, a pure acknowledgement recognition and I, when I came back from that experience, I understood like, oh, I get it now. I get what it means to find your hive. It means um, being yourself fully, be resonating who you are completely and authentically, which, you know, Uranus, and um, having that sense of, of clear belonging in your community uh, with Source while also being out in your environment and expressing yourself and being able to do that among others, you know, not having any resistance between the two of you, um, no need to exchange words, just, it's just a knowing. And so as I was um, putting this talk together, it was that moment that has been feeling so um, present for me. 
and the signature above all else, you know, and the, you know, that transits my Uranus. It's, it's a great, you know, um, it's a great an anecdotal story about what this can look like. But, you know, my sights are on, my sights are further, you know, I've got, I've got my sights on, you know, finding my way into this world where that can be the reality, where we find our hive. And, um, and I believe that's a huge piece of, of this new paradigm that we're working our way into. And Uranus and Chiron, if I understand correctly, maybe someone can, can tell me if they know more about this, but they don't, um, they don't aspect each other a ton. Um, we, we don't see um, these, these clusters of aspects. Um, this doesn't, doesn't happen all the time, but there are times whenever you'll get clusters of them. And so for the, so I read that somewhere, I didn't research it, so I shouldn't mention it, but I, it just, you know, it just gave me this idea, which I think is a nice idea, which is that there's a whole bunch of us that are just really ready for it. You know, we're ready to do that work, not just for ourselves, but for the collective, because that's what it's about. We're not just working out our karmas, you know, we're working out the collectives. And so that we can all move forward um, into this world in a new way. So um, with that said, you know, I want to open it up to questions if we have questions at this point or comments, and then we can move on to some volunteer charts. So I can just keep talking, so I, I should stop. Mel Melanie, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. I just want to say that listening and hearing your experiences is so beautiful, so authentic and beautiful. And I know as I came into communicating and all of that, it's such, it's such a delicious place to be because it's so real. And mm -hmm. it's not lived so much in our culture. And when we, when we go, when we're there and we live from there, it's just, it's so sweet. It's just the sweetest mm -hmm. spot. So I'm happy for you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. <laughs> you know, when I, I say I'm just starting to feel brave enough to, to express Melanie out in the world, like, that's a big part of it. I um, had these experiences um, in varying degrees throughout my life. And it's the part where I, I share it and I talk about it that, you know, feels overwhelming to me. I've, I've, I've felt like I would die if I talked about it. If I shared, if I was honest about it, that I would just die. You know, someone would kill me. <laughs> and, and it got to the point where I felt like I was going to die if I didn't speak up. You know, it just, it was during a nodal return, which is, you know, still somewhat within orb you know i've been going through a nodal return and it just it was the impetus for me to to finally launch my website where i i just i share these stories you know i get to express my north node through writing and sharing these stories it's a new thing for me <laughs> yeah i'm glad you're recovering those steps it's it's a big thing thank you melanie it's tashi Hi, Tashi. I wanted to just tell you I loved your story about your rat and as Uranus, with your Sag rising, you know, you're just a, that's just the Damon soul, one of the big signatures of the Damon soul. And then Uranus being transited by Jupiter, the ruler of your ascendant, and then that lesson of the death experience, Scorpio. I just love how beautifully said it, it is in your chart. Yeah. It's, it's so sweetly said. So thanks for sharing that. It was Thank nice. you. I appreciate that. Great. And also, um, I, I've done a whole nother talk on the, the Uranus Chiron squares to my nodes from a totally different angle. It's, it's funny how um, these archetypes can be true story after story after story around so, from so many different angles, you know. So um, I would be very interested um, to hear about um, Jordan. Did I say it right? Yes, you Jordan. did. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I mean, if you have questions or anything, you know, great. Um, I'm also just really interested in 
for your thoughts because I know that you are are um, you're working with these archetypes. You know, you're doing chart readings. You're you're pretty immersed in um, your own connections with the way that you express these things. And so I'm just tickled to hear um, the way that you experience these archetypes. And if you find that any of the things that have been said about them feel true for you. Absolutely. I, I wanted to share as well. I think your examples are so heart touching and so authentic. And I feel like that's so needed in this world to like take it beyond the head space of understanding this is what archetypes are and this is how you apply them to like, this is how you live them. You know, it was really, really, I actually wanted to cry when you were talking about your rat. <laughs> it's a really sweet story. And, and yeah, I really, I resonate a lot with everything that you're saying, you know, the, the element of going back and forth between Chiron and Uranus, and then there's that stellium there. So it's, I feel like it's going back and forth between Chiron and then the whole Capricorn stellium and then back yeah. and forth. Again. <laughs> it's, yeah. I actually resonate a lot with you in terms of the being able to express myself through writing and um, putting, like, I actually learn a lot from the things that I say to other people for myself, you know, that happens a lot. And so I think that's, that's a really common thing. Like we tend to attract the people to us that maybe need to teach us something while we're simultaneously, you know, thinking we're in the teacher role, but really we're the, student, you know, <laughs> Yeah, so it's, it's great. And other than that, I'm just, I'm really curious to see um, what, what you pick up from this. But thanks for, thanks for inviting yeah. me to speak with that. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I, have, I have a question for you. Um, I was curious to see what your relationship is to organized religion, um, or if you have, you know, ways that you've ex experienced things around that or dogma in general. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of the story there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was baptized um, Catholic. I went, you know, for the first eight to nine years of my life to a Catholic school. Um, I experienced some pretty, not personally, but witnessed things that happened to make us leave the Catholic Church. And then, and then there was a big jump when my father decided that he was going to become a born-again Christian, which was, whoa, that was a lot for my family, a lot for my mom. That kind of started to create a rift between them. For me, I'm in the middle. I'm all curious. I'm like, I like the way it feels to be in community and like be at church and all this stuff. But then all these other wheels start turning. I'm like, I don't like what the Bible says about women. <laughs> you know? Like, I don't like the way that certain stories are being spun. So it, it really has made me have to do a lot of my own research, which I think brought me back to that Chiron healing space of like, okay, how am I going to figure out what my own truth is and all of this and how to not completely reject spirituality in itself? Because I did that for a while before even when I was just starting into astrology, I actually came to astrology more from a, like a psychological place because I was, you know, calling myself an atheist, you know, and, and I had to have this like complete, like turning my back from all elements of spirituality to finding it in, in a totally new way, you know, like connecting to yoga and like Buddhist teachings and um, just natural law and all the things that connected me back to earth and like back to seeing like how how nature and, and spirituality really reflect each other quite well. And, and I found so much that as I was looking out into the stars, I was actually looking into myself. And it was a really beautiful synthesis that really brought me back to a whole different kind of spirituality. And, and to the point where I don't have like bad feelings about my experiences growing up and like the, the traumas that it caused, you know, with such like jarring shifts <laughs> of belief, you know? Um, and I accept it and I embrace it. And it's actually really funny. I find that I have a lot of people coming to me that have really similar stories. Even, even my husband, he's, his parents are born again Christians and he's, he's not, you know, and he's like of a different generation. And so like when we are hanging out with them, we're like, Oh, like, Hey, we're going to like try to talk about the same thing in a different way. And we're all learning from each other. And it's so interesting. Like that ninth house is like in-laws. Cause I feel like that's the number one thing that we're talking about when we go and hang out with the in-laws. And you can imagine how all of those kinds of conversations get really sparked around Christmas time, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. There's, um, 
yeah, what I was when I was looking at that stellium, you know, and, and its relationship to the ninth house with Saturn and then all of that Capricorn um, and Uranus, um, there's just the you ca I can't see all of that without being curious about how you've experienced dogma, you know, um, that through organized religion, there is so many there, it. it a lot of organized religion is very rigid. And, um, and it's interesting when you had said the thing about, um, you know, being raised around um, religions that, that study the Bible, but um, you don't know that you really believe or, or resonate with the things that the Bible says, you know? Um, there's a piece there that I just, I invite you to, um, to consider that the Bible has been translated, you know, out of the language that the messages were delivered in. And there's actually a lot of clarification that has been offered around what those teachings actually meant that make way more sense, you know. And um, I personally, and, um, and again, my just in the spirit of authenticity and transparency, and that's been my motto for my, my coming out, you know, and being more open, you know, is, is just radical, you know, transparency and radical authenticity. So, um, so even though a lot of people have wounding around um, more Christ-centered religions, you know, I feel a little bit shy about talking about Jesus, <laughs> you know? Um, in my relationship with Jesus, but um, I realized that recently I realized that all of the messages that I've been um, receiving over past years, a lot of things that um, I've been guided to try to understand better, and I've been getting all these messages around how certain things work and what it means, but not fully understanding them. Um, and I just not I feeling like, oh, I'm on the edge of under getting this, but I really don't get it. And I recently discovered that, um, that Jesus Christ, you know, has been working on this planet to deliver, to re-deliver his messages a lot because people have gotten them wrong. And, um, and there are books, you know, that people have written down the conversations with him. And the A Course in Miracles is, is one of them. And it was all of the messages that, um, that I was receiving, but clear. And we're all of a sudden like, oh, okay, I get it. Takes the work out of me trying to figure it out. But also, damn it, I wanted to be the one to get to know it and say it, you know? But it's good. There's like, I get to, it, it's, I get to skip ahead and seeing how much these resonate and clarification and validation, the fact that these are the same messages, you know? But just um, really, really delivered. Um, and articulated in a way that just it makes makes it really easy to understand. So it's worth checking out, of course, in miracles. But all of that is just to say um, that there's you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, you know. That there are teachings that get lost in dogma, and, um, and what I was seeing in your stellium is that that. The, there are, um, I feel like, a lot of people that will want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. You know, they'll just want to reject it all. And it seems like you're in a position to, um, to be more supportive of helping people um, get around that, um, get around the, the dogma of something, to see the value and there being some structure to spirituality, but in the form of um, certain, certain things like yoga practices, there's like a well-worn groove there, you know, that makes it more accessible to people. And you don't have to be beholden to it, you know, but it can be helpful. And so that ability to help um, people to, to reclaim that and reconnect with that without, um, while acknowledging that there are a lot of wounds there, you know, there's so many wounds there and working out what that looks like to have been persecuted by the church, you know, for these communities. Um, the, the healing that's wanting to, to reemerge, you know, that was being experienced in these communities that were wiped out by the church and because of dogma 
so the ability to say um to reject that aspect of it you know and and heal from that while also still claiming the ability to connect with spirit and knowing that that there are organizing principles around this that are much more natural you know that mercury and your sun and sagittarius um all being kind of pulled into that stellium with uranus you know wanting to help under people connect to that ability to heal and that ability to connect with spirit and with source but through the organizing principles of nature not through patriarchy you know and that's the shift that is happening so thanks for for um for being patient while i i needed to talk my way through that but i think that's the piece that is the the most important piece is that <laughs> there are organizing principles that that help us you know Melanie, 10 minutes left. Okay, got it. And so, um, did you have any other questions or any thoughts on that? No, I think that's great. Thank you so much for that. It's, it's really, um, it's definitely been a big part of my, of my work with people, actually, as I find I'm almost always talking about their spiritual practice <laughs> and like strategizing a way to like get into that authentically so that you really hit the nail on yeah. the head with that. So yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And ritual too. And I just want to offer too that um, the ways that I'm being guided to work with, with um, through spiritual practices, um, it was a, this big aha moment for me when I was told, you know, my guides told me that I can make up a ritual that gives them something to do and they'll do it as long as there's like, you know, as long as the path is laid out that when I light this candle and I say this word, that means you do this, okay? Like, and my guides will show up or the angels will say, okay, and they'll do it. But, um, and that's how all of this stuff is, comes about. It's just that people hand these practices down and they become well-worn grooves. Um, but, and the ritual can be helpful, but you're not beholden to it and you can make it up. You know, so you can figure out what works for you and you can instruct others and in how to find out what works for them and then just be consistent with it so that it can become, it can create more and more energy around it, you know. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank and then you. we'll move. Yeah. And then we'll move forward to Francisco. He's been waiting patiently. Um, are you there, Francisco? I'm here. I don't. Okay. Oh, there you are. Um, would you be so kind as to share um, while you've been listening in on all of this, um, if there are pieces that have stood out for you or your own personal experience around these dynamics? Uh, yes, there is a lot to share, actually. <laughs> you see me, Chiron in my eighth, opposing uh, Saturn in, in my second, and all this placement aspecting my nodal axis and my Mars mm -hmm. in Aquarius in the sixth. So, yes. It's been a tremendous healing process, going back and forth, the heal, the, the wounds, the blockages. Then, so I learned to connect with my emotions. Uh, in, the, mm -hmm. in, in Taoism, they believe that emotions are stored in, in, in organs like anger in the liver, and anxiety in, in, in the spleen, fear in the kidneys. So I take, connect with them before I go to bed. Before, in bed before I sleep, I connect with, let's say, anger. I, I, I'm angry and we remain in my center. And then during the dream, I receive an answer or uh, indications of, of what I need to do in order to heal. Maybe that's because of my eighth house ruled by Pisces and in the eighth house. So, and even if I don't see anything in the dream, I just wake up and the answer is there. Oh, I need to do this. I need to work on that. Mm, right now, I'm, I've been in the middle of a healing process. It's been very long, very difficult. In a past meeting, I, I described my father as a very abusive man. Actually, it was about sadomasochism. Uh, but it happens that he's terminally ill. So he requires 24 hour a day assistance. So I, I live in his house, and my mother and I take care of everything. I mean, we, they, we take turns to take, take care of him to, and do our things. I take care of all the legal and financial stuff. And it's been a process of um, compassion and forgiveness. I think that's, um, well, also as uh, according to Barbara Handclaw, this opposition is also an opportunity to work with the co 
Kundalini energy. So in Taoist practices, I've been learning how to move it up from my sacrum to my pineal gland. And that has been bringing me a lot of insight for uh, like memory improves, intuition improves, and, and, and I can keep getting clear messages every time. I don't know what else you would like to. Well, also, I guess because of this aspect of Mars in my sixth, I exercise is a big outlet to all, the, all these emotions I've been healing. It's like Chiron in the dreams moves all the trash and then just go to the gym and the trash is gone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so I, um, when you were talking about, you know, feeling into it before you go to bed and then you wake up and the solution is there, I yes. instantly, I instantly started looking for a connection in your chart between, um, Sagittarius and Neptune, <laughs> you know, I knew it. It's right there, of course, in the fourth house. And so the fact that your emotions are so engaged in that process too. But, um, the, I have, you know, Pisces also and Sagittarius. Um, and I experience so much work happening in the dream time for me. And um, when you see the, that connection between the, the Piscean and the Sagittarius, you know, those impulses connected through, through planets, it will denote um, oftentimes a more psychic ability um, and also um, dream work. So yes. the, being, in, being in the fourth house, it makes sense that you're engaging your emotions, you know, in the process and that the solutions are able to work themselves out through the dreams. Do you remember what you dream when you wake up or is it the, do the solutions present themselves in the dreams or you just wake up and it's shifted? Almost every day I remember what I dream. And uh, many times I have lucid dreams also. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Special. Um, when you... Do you mind that I'm I'm prying? Do you, um, I'm I'm wondering if you could share more about the lucid dreams. Like, what what are you are you working on your problems when you're lucid dreaming? Well, I do anything. Yes, I, for example, well, that didn't succeed. But it's it, it's a good example. One of my children gave me is gave me some problems, so I became lucid. I said, okay, man, I'm lucid. I can do whatever I want. I began to fly. I, said, I want to see Gabriel. So I was flying. I said, okay, this is this is where he is. I landed smoothly. I said, okay, I want to see Gabriel. But I think my anxiety didn't let me actually uh, wait for him. I mean, I, I, I became too anxious and the dream collapsed. But yes, I, I, I do a lot of... Um, I haven't succeeded much in that, but I'm working on getting problems solved through lucid dreams. I'm not getting answers, but, but like more... Um, not a lot of details, but I, but I get, but I get answers. Yeah. Right. Um, do you, do you work, um, with healing modalities in any form with other people or are there things that you're learning or picking up on for yourself through this process? It, right now I, I do it for myself. I, I have been taught to do it for other people. Just, just I, I, I don't know why I haven't done it. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> I know. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm noticing too. Your Chiron is, you know, in the sign of Aries in the eighth house. And when I was way back, when I was doing the slides, you know, talking about how that um, back and forth between the Uranus and the Chiron, you know, like oh, it hurts, but so you move away from Chiron to Uranus, where you can access the pain in a different way, and then just going back and forth. Um, you also have the, um, Scorpio and, and Pluto very much, you know, in on that dynamic, and, you know, there was, um, but that back and forth can also be true when you have Chiron linked up with, with, uh, with Pluto. And so the fact that you have all of them, you know, working together, it feels like you've, um, you've really doubled down in this lifetime on, you know, getting it done <laughs> in a, in a pretty big way. But also being an Aries, that 
almost um, that that instinct is is just there. Like it's that it's going to drive you to to strike out into um, experiencing the things that are going to facilitate deeper understanding and healing for you. And I was wondering if you find that to be true. Yes, I have a, a, a lot of progress, and yes, it, it hasn't been any easy. Yeah. Like you, it seems like almost like you wouldn't be able to escape if you tried. Oh no! Yeah, <laughs> I have tried actually. I said no. Okay. More. I, I I I said to my inner teacher, I quit. You are not my teacher anymore. But then <laughs> I fall asleep and see him in my dreams. Hey, you need to do this. You need to do that. Okay. Here we go again. Okay. Uh, excuse me, Melanie. This brings us to the end of your meeting. Um, we'll have to stop here. So thank you very much from all of us. Thank you to the volunteers, Jordan and Francisco. And would you all please thank Melanie Gary, everyone. Thanks, Thanks Melanie. Melanie. Thank so you. Awesome. Thank you. That was really good. Thank Thanks, you, Melanie. You're awesome. Yeah. Stick with it. Thank you. It's worthwhile. Thanks, guys. We're doing uh -huh. it together, guys. Thanks, Melanie. Bye bye. Bye. See you bye. in the hive. Yep. See you in the hive. Yeah, absolutely.